Good morning. Today is September 6th. Welcome to worship this morning. For thousands of years, First Nations people have walked on this land. We acknowledge their history, spirituality, and culture. As we worship in this place, may we live concerning the First Peoples of the Williams Treaty's First Nations and other Indigenous peoples and thank them for sharing this land. We acknowledge the Chippewas of Georgina Island First Nation as our close neighbor and friend, one with which we learn to live in peace and friendship and remember their stewardship. Announcements Teresa Beadle is recovering after surgery. Thanks to all who remember her in your prayers. September 8th, Tuesday at 10 a.m. is our next online coffee time. I'll send out another reminder before that. September 16th, Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. is the board meeting of Raven Shu United Church. And September 22nd, Tuesday at 1 p.m. is the board meeting of Keswick United Church. Today is the first Sunday of September and we have birthdays and anniversaries to celebrate. If you know exactly who they are for the celebration, give them a call after the service. Let's sing a song together for the celebration.
Today, we are worshiping in the environment of Raven Shoe United Church. When we read and sing, we know that all of us are doing the same. Through the help of the Holy Spirit, we are worshiping in the same sacred place. Now, let us begin today's worship. Peace be with you, and also with you. We light this candle as a sign of God's Spirit at work in the world. May His light brighten our spirits. May the light of God shine through us and brighten the world. Call to worship. We step into this new day listening to God's great story. We make ready for God's freedom. We step into new purposes for the church with the light of God before us. We make ready for God's freedom. We step into new purposes for our lives as we taste God's reminders of hope. We make ready for God's freedom. Worship the Lord, worship the Father, the Spirit. 
gathering prayer. Great God, we move into this time and space with our sight and sense of smell, with our listening and our touch, with our hearts and our minds, so that we may live inside your stories. Help us remember who we are as your children, as we celebrate the purpose you give us as your people. Amen. Today's responsive scripture reading is from Psalm 149. Let's hear the refrain, then we proceed. Sing to God a new song. Give praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel rejoice in its Maker. Let the children of Zion exult in their sovereign. Let them praise God's name with dancing. Let them sing God's praise with tambourine and harp. For you, O God, take delight in your people. You crown the humble with victory. Let the faithful exult in their glory. Let them sing for joy as they feast. All children of Zion, rejoice and give praise. Let God's praise be on their lips, the two-edged sword in their hands, to bring the nations to justice, and call to account the peoples, to bind their rulers with fetters, their great ones with bonds of iron, to execute on them the sentence decreed. This is the glory of all God's saints. Today's scripture is from the book of Exodus, chapter 12, verses 1 to 14. Wayne Butcher will be the reader. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month, 
They are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord." The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Remember, Restore, Renew. Let's reflect on these three R's today. Do you remember what they are? We have seen them in April, five months ago. They are parsley, shank bone, roasted hard-boiled egg, onion, horseradish, and a mixture of dates, figs, cinnamon, etc. Together, they would form a plate, a Passover Seder plate. Then it becomes a sign, a sign that tells a story. Individually, they all carry their specific meaning. Horseradish means bitterness, shank bone, the Passover sacrifice, roasted hard boiled egg, the mourning, onion, the bitterness, the mixture, the slavery and parsley, the hope and renewal. But as a whole, they act together like a key, a key that opens a door with treasures hidden behind. The scripture that we heard this morning was the memory of the first Passover. In the past two Sundays, some questions were raised, but we don't have answers for them. Why would the Pharaoh feel threatened? While well, the number of slaves which were their access kept increasing. How could two midwives be able to accomplish the Pharaoh's wish to kill all Hebrew baby boys? Moses was not considered 100% Egyptian and not 100% Hebrew. He tried to save one of the Hebrews and killed an Egyptian but was threatened by some Hebrews for doing that and had to run for his life. How close would he consider himself as related to the Hebrews, other than the fact that he had a brother called Aaron and a sister called Miriam? Moses encountered God who appeared in the burning bush and was told to get back to Egypt to face a new Pharaoh. His mission would have been easier if the previous pharaoh was there, still there, since he wanted to decrease the number of slaves. Moses' mission was to bring the slaves away from Egypt. Moses and the previous pharaoh was probably a good match. But it was a new pharaoh that he had to face, who didn't think the same way. He was reluctant to let the slaves go. There must be numerous plagues that happened in the history of Egypt. And now, the writer had them all piled up so that tensions could be seen. 
between the one who has supreme power over the powerless and the one who wanted to make a change. Pharaoh on one side and God on the other, represented, represented by Moses. The story we have today is the tenth plague, the last and the most severe one, the plague on the firstborn, the firstborn of all who were not protected by the sign of blood, including the firstborn of the Egyptian families, slave families, and animals. There is no historical evidence showing that what has been described in the Bible did happen. But it's obvious that civil disobedience, peaceful protests, or nonviolent resistance were not options back then for the slaves. So something did happen that made the escape of slaves from Egypt possible. When the writer wrote this part of Jewish history, the focus was on the ritual of the first Passover meal. Details were given to the meal. The number of people the meal used to be shared, the time the sheep or goat had to be chosen, its age, its gender, its health condition, the time of slaughter, how the meat was to be prepared, what to eat with and what to do with leftover. Details were also given to the way how people dressed, with cloak tucked into a belt, put sandals on, take a staff in the hand, and they had to eat together in haste, like running out of time. One can read the passage with hatred and revenge in mind, but that's not the purpose of, this, of the writer. The writer was trying to establish a tradition that would help the next generations to remember, restore, and renew. What stays in our memory is not always pleasant. Do we still remember I mentioned my experience with my siblings and my classmate when I was young? I could have trapped and labeled myself as a cunning person for the rest of my life, but I didn't, and I don't. We might still remember the problems that we had with our parents, our siblings, our playmates, our first loves, our best friends, etc. That we might not want to look back or even to mention, but they keep coming back to haunt us anyway. Especially when we are in the state of having tunnel vision. Where is the help of God that got us out of those situations or barely out of them? Are we still trapped there somehow? The tenth plague, the plague on the firstborn, was a remind, reminder to the Hebrews and still is to their next generations. Something had happened. Even though we don't exactly know what it was. There were situations of uproar, violence and bloodshed on both sides, Egyptian and Hebrew. The sign of blood however, pointed them away from those situations towards lives that have been restored. All generations are encouraged to make themselves ready for that restoration. A full restoration would help us to face our past, our memory with no fear. What is past is prologue. It's up to us to make our own destinies. We may see the grace of God that we didn't see. Are we ready to go through the same process? With our belt on our cloak, with sandals on our feet, with a staff in our hand, and eat the meal like in a hurry? We have a lot of experience buried in our memories. They could all become our strength if we dare to face them, to have ourselves restored. When the Hebrews or the Israelites celebrate Passover, they were energized. So are we. When we celebrate and encounter the resurrected Jesus Christ and worship God every Sunday, instead of Passover Seder, Seder meal, we celebrate communion. We remind ourselves how Jesus allowed himself to be killed, his blood 
his sacrifice, just as the blood of the sheep or the goat, has become a sign to us, a sign of liberation that we are freed from the forces that have been restraining us. We are now living a new life, free to do whatever pleases us. If we set a goal that pleases God, then we are on the path of renewal. Our life is in the process of transformation, and every day is a day that re-energizes us. As Paul said, may we all act as good and respectable people, living together the same way as we will in the day of his coming. Do not fall into patterns of dark living, wild partying, drunkenness, sexual depravity, decadent gratification, quarreling, and jealousy. Instead, wrap yourselves in the Lord Jesus, God's anointed, and do not feel your sinful imagination by indulging your self-seeking desire for the pleasures of the flesh. Amen. Give and receive our offering. We inspire to share your glorious love with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Increase our talents and offerings so that your name is exalted with unending praise. Just a reminder, you can make a donation to the church through PAR by mailing your check to the church office or go online to canadahelps.org and do your donation. If you want to do it by e-transfer, that can be done now with Caswick United. You can find the full information here, or you can contact the church office for more details.
Prayer of Dedication Bind us together in your purposes, Creator, that we may agree on the faithful use of these offerings to bring peace and healing. May we remember your presence within these very gifts. May we restore our hope in you. May we renew your church in compassionate action. Amen. Prayers of the People I continue to invite you to send me your prayers before the next Sunday service. Today our prayers are divided into several sessions. At the end of each session, we shall respond by saying, May God be our helper. I will show you the words of response at the end of each session. Let's pray. Holy One, you are the one who not only creates the day, but frees us from all false ways. Restore us through the rituals our tradition has given us, the ways of prayer, the sacraments of baptism and Eucharist, our worship together, our reading scripture in community. Help us to build trust among our one another, to find our common story and find a common purpose for the church. We remember all who were with us in this church, but no longer coming. This church belongs to God. We built this is history, but it's God's mission that we are following. We come together because it's the purpose of God. May God be our helper. Lead us, God, to risk conversations and actions that can restore relationships rather than letting it be to each one's own. We long for restoration in so many things, from our distance from you, from addictions and consumption, from lost purpose and loneliness, from domestic violence and global aggression, from economic and racial injustice, from worship of idols like body image, success, and time. May God bless the words coming out from our mouths so that they may bring us back together, closer to each other. May God be our helper. Help us to build the community we truly need by sharing your story rehearsing our tradition and reaching out to others in the freedom you have given us. Amen. Outside the lines, exploring paths that few could ever find, and takes me into places where I've never been before, and opens the doors to worlds outside the lines. My Lord outside the lines turns wounds to blessings or to into wine and it takes me into places where I've never been before and opens the doors to worlds outside the lines we'll never we're not prepared to drown body and soul 
need a soaking from time to time And we'll never move the gravestones If we're not prepared to die And realize there are worlds outside the lines My soul longs to color outside the lines Tear back the curtains, sun come in and a shine. I want to walk beyond the boundaries where I've never been before. Throw open the doors to worlds outside the lines. We'll never walk on water if we're not prepared to drown. Body and soul need a soaking from time to time. And we'll never move the gravestones if we're not prepared to die and realize there are worlds outside the lines. My soul longs to color outside the lines. Sun come in and a shine I want to walk beyond the boundaries Where I've never been before Throw open the doors To worlds outside the lines Commissioning and Blessing Let's smile to each other in spirit when we receive the blessing from God. You are a sign of God's freedom. Go now in the spirit of God. Create a holy place wherever you go. You are a sign of God's freedom. Amen. Our worship service this morning has come to an end. Remember, you can always reach me by leaving a message in the office or call me directly. See you all next Sunday on the same platform.